Hi guys. Penny here. I haven't done this in ages and ages. Don't know if this is even going to work. But let me check over here on my Facebook page and see if I am going live over there. And if I am, then we'll know. Oh my gosh, looks like it is. Okay, well good. Hello everyone. Um, let's see. What have you been doing in the months and months since I've done a Facebook Live? Um, oh, Chris Jeffries just got on. Thank you, Chris. It's Chris's birthday. Happy birthday, Chris. I saw her earlier and she's looking great, but happy birthday and thank you for taking a few minutes out of your birthday evening to join me, your sweetheart. Um, so if you don't know, but I should tell you, I do Stampin' Up! Uh, paper crafts. Um, my love of crafts has been mostly lifelong. Not completely lifelong, but a long time. You're very welcome, Chris. Um, and I got into paper crafting when we went on our first Disney cruise, and I decided to learn how to make scrapbooks. So I did scrapbooking. And then eventually that kind of morphed into other paper crafts. Um, with card making being a big part of it because I was doing cards for Operation Right Home, um, which was a organization that you would make cards and send and they would go to military bases for military uh, members to use to send home or to send wherever, like birthday cards, happy, you know, all kinds of cards. Anyway, you made cards, you left them blank, you sent them off and they used them. Did that for quite a few years and really enjoyed it. Um, and then sadly that organization organization stopped. But long story short, I still love scrapbooking. I still love card making. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I rarely go live. It takes me out of my comfort zone. But here I am. So I did a scrapbook layout, a two-page layout this week, and I thought I'll share that with the members of my team. I have a wonderful downline team of crafters who are dear friends and we enjoy crafting together. Anyway, I thought I'd share my two-page layout with them. We did a craft retreat a couple, maybe it's been a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to use some of the stuff, the paper that I used at that craft retreat. I wanted to show the people something else they could do with that um, patterned paper. So I'm going to show that tonight. Um, but I, I, it takes a while to put a scrapbook page together, so that is already put together, and I will show it to you after I demonstrate my card. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a very simple birthday card, but um, I was looking through my birthday cards for a male or non-gender specific card the other day, and I've got all these flowery, floral, beautiful, lovely cards, but I had a hard time finding one that I could send to a gentleman that was having his 100th birthday. Um, and so I did finally find one in my stash, but I decided I would make some more and I would demonstrate one tonight. At least I think they could go male, female, doesn't matter. And that's good to have. So and let me put the camera, turn it around and put it down. Um, this is what is always tricky for me because I don't have expensive apparatus set up, but bear with me a second while I swivel the camera down and around and I'll show you my card and I'll make it. It's a simple one. And then I'll show you my scrapbook layout too. And by the way, since I didn't put anything online until like right before, what, two hours before this, um, I don't expect too many people to be here. But if you're here like Chris is and um, I really appreciate you tuning in. Mostly I figure people might watch it on replay later. And if you do, comment like it, share it, um, and I will, uh, I'll give somebody the card, one of the cards I make tonight, or both of them. I've already made one, that's my model. My other one will be different. I'll, I'll uh, put your name in a drawing if you like and share my little video here, and I'll give it to you. So, um, let me change this down to my table. I tried to set it up ahead of time so that it would be approximately in a good position. So looks like I've kind of got it there. Uh, as I said earlier, I don't have the most expensive, wonderful setup. Um, I wish I did, but I put money into stamps and inks and paper instead of expensive technological equipment. So I guess that's where my priorities lie, huh? 
me move my pencil. Um, maybe comment if you're seeing it all right. On my end, it looks like you can see my glass mat. Oh, by the way, I am liking my glass mat. It took me a while to finally get it out and start using it. Some of the people on my team, Nancy, um, Jolene, um, a few others were commenting about how they like theirs and use theirs. I appreciated their comments. Um, so I'm using mine more and I'm liking it too. If you are not a demonstrator and would like to place an order, because I'm going to show you some great stuff tonight, um, this is my host code for July. This is so <laughs> Walmart-ish, so rinky-dink that I just write it out on a paper. Um, but take a screenshot of that in case you may choose to purchase from me. Um, if you do, of course, I send thank you gifts to people who purchase with me. And in August, or August, in July, right now, Stampin' Up! has a special. For every $50 you spend, you get a coupon code to use in August for $5 off. So that's a savings. Um, so you would get that, but I also send personal thank you gifts to people who order with me. But of course, if you're on my downline team, which several of you are, um, you would only order through yourself and get your own savings. So there you go. Anyway, I'll move the host code a little bit out of the way now. Um, I used to have one really nice banner printed out with host code on it and stuff. <laughs> and then I never do these videos, so I I threw that away, and then tonight I thought, why don't you do one, Penny? So, like I said, I needed a masculine card anyway. wanted to show you how to do one. All right, so here is um, a new stamp set, or new-ish, that I'm using tonight. It's called Saying Hey, and it's a, a nice stamp set for a few different reasons. A, the price point is really good on it. There's no images on it, it's just sent sayings on it, but I just love this great big hay. And then there's neat, what I think are fun um, sayings. Hey, I'm so glad you exist, you can do this, good looking, like hey, good looking. Um, I love this, insert clever message here. Um, I didn't use that tonight, but I loaded it on my block and I was gonna use it, um, but I, I didn't. So, but like, hey, I miss your face. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's a neat stamp set. Great price point, like I said. Not a great big stamp set. It's just got those few stamps in it, but 10 stamps in it. And it's photopolymer, which are my favorite stamps because you can see through them. To me, it makes it a lot easier for stamping. Oh, Brenda, hello. Hi there. Thank you for coming on. You're a sweetheart. Good to see you on here. This is, as I mentioned in the beginning, very last minute. I'm just quick doing... Uh, birthday card and then I'm going to show a two-page layout so if you hang around at the end I'll show you a two-page scrapbook layout I did that's not too hard but the card's super easy and non-gender specific so here's the one I did already and let me get it close enough so you can see I didn't want to zoom the camera in too close because when I get the scrapbook layout out um, it would be too hard to see it's a 12 by 12 scrapbook page so Anyway, so as I mentioned on that stamp set, I used the great big hay, and I used on the inside, I kept it very simple, but on the card I'm going to make tonight, I'll put a little designer series paper, but I just stamped happy birthday in there. Um, like I said, it's a good font. It's non-gender specific. You could stamp uh, some balloons in here. You could punch out some balloons and put in here. You could do other things on the inside, but I was in a hurry, and like I said, I wanted to do something quick, simple, and easy, and so this is what I came up with. The paper that I'm using is one of our 6x6 Designer Series paper packs. And the name of the paper pack is called Bright and Beautiful. If you don't own it, it's got beautiful colors in it. Um, hence the name, Bright and Beautiful. And I'll show you the colors real quickly that are in it for cardstock. So I, when I decide to make a card and I've got the pattern paper that has... On the back, it tells you the colors that are in it on Stampin' Up. So I get those colors out that goes with this pack. First, I pick out my pattern paper, and then I get all the cardstock out that is in that. So here's my cardstock choices that I had to coordinate with the designer series paper. 
Um, as most of you know, if you know anything about Stampin' Up!, that's our biggest, I think, our biggest um, benefit is that our products all coordinate. Our ink coordinates with our cardstock, it coordinates with our designer series paper, coordinates with our embellishments, coordinates with our ribbon. Things go well together. They are harmonious, and that's, to me, important when you're making something. So when I picked out the paper, then, of course, I could look and say, oh, blueberry bushel is going to be a beautiful blue to put with this, and the yellow is lemon lolly, and I know it's going to go well together. So that's what I did. Um, so I'll move the paper out of the way, but I, I wanted to tell you how it is that I go about choosing. And sometimes if the color in here, you might want a different hue, you might want to go a lighter tone or a darker tone, but getting them all out just helps me kind of make those choices. So on this card, I used blueberry bushel and lemon lolly, if I didn't already say that. I can't remember if I did or not. The one I'm going to make with you right now. I'm going to use um, a different, one of the colors are going to be different. So, in this pack of paper, the patterns I chose out for this card, I wanted to do a card that looks a little different. I chose a diagonal striped one, and I think I've got a whole sheet in this pack that is the same, so you can see it as a whole. Because that one, obviously, I've already cut. I figured to save time, I would cut my paper ahead of time instead of doing it on screen with you guys um here's well maybe that was my last one of that paper oh no here it is so as a whole six by six it looks like that and the back of it would coordinate if you were wanting to use um this color it would coordinate but i wanted to go with the green so i'm using lemon lime twist as my other color and my other paper that i used has stars on it Rather than waste time trying to find the whole sheet, I'll show you it looks like this. So I'm going with the star sheet and that diagonal stripe. So, as I said, to save time, I'll go quickly through this. I started out with a piece of thick whisper, or not whisper white, basic white. Our paper is five and a half by eight and a half, and I'm sorry, eight and a half by eleven. And so I took one sheet and I scored it in the middle at five and a half, and then I cut it in half, so that gave me two card bases. So it started out like that. I scored it, and then I cut it this way, and I got two card bases. I made this one. Now I'll use this for this. So scored it five and a half. I'm going to use a bone folder to crease it good. Then I've already cut the pieces, as I said. Um, I'm going to use this time... Lemon Lime Twist as my paper to mat my pattern paper on. It's a very narrow border. The Lemon Lime Twist is four and an eighth this way by five and three eighths this way. And then my DSP, it's what we call our pattern paper, which DSP stands for Designer Series Paper. It's our designer paper, of course. So it is four by five and a quarter. That's very standard. Four by five and a quarter is a standard. You could just put this right on the white without that layer behind it. But um, this very narrow border layer just kind of adds a little bit extra. So if you're making this with any other products you have at home, you can choose to layer it on a coordinating color or you could leave it off as I said and put it just straight on the white. So I'm going to put the designer series paper. I use a little liquid glue Tombow um, and then I'm going to put it on here. When you've got a very narrow border the liquid glue is especially good because you can slide it just slightly to get it about where you want it. That narrow border is a little less forgiving than a big one, so that's why you want to... And I probably didn't get it perfect, but... And then if I use liquid glue, sometimes I'll use my bone folder like this to try to smooth it out. You don't want to put your liquid glue right to the edge of your designer series paper, because then when you press it down, some of it might kind of goop out the edge. So go in just a little ways from the edge and do it. For example, here, I'm not going to go right to the edge. I'm going to go a little bit in from the edge. And you don't need a ton. It holds really well. Make sure that your fold is at the bottom 
I mean, your fold is at the top, your opening is at the bottom. We've all accidentally put our paper in upside down. In this case, since it's a stripe, it probably wouldn't matter which way I put it. There is no top and bottom. But if it's like a floral pattern or something, then it would matter, of course. So, there we go. We've got the DSP mounted, layered on, lemon lime twist on our card base. Okay. Um, then, like I said, I chose another pattern that would go with it. But see how that would really you get eaten up by all that um, pattern, this on top of there? So we need to put it on a layer. This is 3 by 3 which works out really nice because this paper is 6 by 6 So 3 by 3 I could actually get two, you know, three more pieces out of here. One, two, three. Or I can cut it here and use this on a card and use this on a card. So, you know, you get more use out of it if 3 by 3 Then I'm using Blueberry Bushel again. That's a, a really beautiful blue. I really love that blue. Um, the other blues in this pack are Azure Afternoon, Misty Moonlight, Lost Lagoon. I don't know if you call that a blue or a green. It's kind of a cross between them. So that's on there too, but I went with this. So see how that's going to help that pattern pop up from that. But before I do, I, I can glue this together, but I can't put it down on the card. I'll show you why. So I'm going to put this 3x3 three three piece of DSP on a 3 and an eighth by 3 and an eighth square of the blueberry bushel, as I said. And again, I can kind of slide this around a little bit if I need to. It's a pretty narrow little border. If I don't get it perfect, that's okay. I'm not Hallmark, as we always say at card classes. So there, that's going to pop up better. But especially it will after I get my banner behind it. I'll put this card back down here so you can kind of in the corner see what we're doing. We're going to get a get a banner behind there. And I cut this, it's two inches wide. And then it's longer than I need it to be because I'm going to punch it um, to get this um, mermaid tail, I think they'll call it. Um, fish tail, they'll call it, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to use a punch to do it. You can use your scissors. I'll show you on the small one how I'll use my scissors. But on the big one, I'm going to use a punch that I have. This is our hexagon punch. And I know this is silver, and sometimes it really glares in the camera. Oh, look, it shows me. Yikes, I hate that. Um, anyway, this is our hexagon punch. You can use this to do a kind of a rounded mermaid tail there. And so I'll do that. I'm going to just put a pencil mark. Oh, I put my pencil away. About where I want the tip to go down to. Let's see. Uh, say roughly about there. So then I'll put this inside. I'll find that little pencil mark. And then I'm going to try to center so that I've got the same amount over here as over here. And that this looks about the same as there. And punch it. And then I've got that. Okay. Let's see if that's about as long as I want it to be. Yeah, that looks okay. If it's not, I could trim a little bit off of this top to make it a little shorter. Let's dry fit this as they say and see. No, I like that. I don't want it to be any shorter than that. Okay, so then I can go ahead and put this down. I did not put any ribbon on this. Um, again, like I said, I, I wanted it to be kind of gender neutral. And sometimes ribbon, depends on what ribbon you use, of course, but sometimes ribbon can kind of make a card look a little more feminine, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Twine doesn't seem to have that same thing. And, like I, and it does really depend on the ribbon, I guess. If it's a satiny, sparkly ribbon, or if it's a grow grain ribbon. There. Yeah, I might not have gotten that exactly even on each side. So I can use that to slide it a little. Okay. All right. <clears throat> then the next thing, I'm going to put this down wherever I want it to be. About there. And I did this flat. The part that I raised up with dimensionals was the sentiment. But you could, if you didn't mind double thickness, you could 
pop this up and then still pop up the sentiment on top. That would be pretty too. I might go up just a tad higher. Now I'm looking to see if I have about the same amount on each side here to here. That's pretty close. And do I look straight across the top and there? Pretty good. Maybe not perfect, like I said, but pretty good. Move that down. Okay. Now I need to get this piece ready. That's going to be this little yellow lemon lolly flag. I'm going to use this blueberry bushel here. This is going to show up a lot better. I was a little unhappy the lemon lolly didn't pop up as much as I wanted color-wise on there. I probably could have went with a different color, but I had already put down the layers, so I just went with it. So, Okay, so now I'll show you how. I to, If you don't want to use a punch or if you don't have the punch, you just cut a little notch up straight in the middle and then corner to middle to that and then corner to that and I didn't quite go far enough on one side I guess usually it'll pop right out there we go that one that's about the same yeah might be a little more pointy than the one I did over there but there's that yeah I don't like that that's a little too Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to try it again here. I went up a little further than I would have liked to. I don't want it to be that pointy. Especially So this time I didn't cut as far up in the middle. I went a shorter distance up. And see how that's less This is longer pointy. I like this better. So, and this is going to get covered by my sentiment, so it won't matter. So there's that. Now we need to stamp the sentiment. I'm so, I, on this one, I'm also still going to use that same color, blueberry bushel, but you could use, there's so many colors in this paper that you could go with. The lemon lime twist, I think, would be a bit light colored, but you could probably get away with it because this is a pretty solid stamp word. So on a photopolymer, um, you just tap, 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 and you can look at it and see if you've got ink coverage good on it. If you're not sure, just tap, tap, tap. Don't grind into your stamp, your ink pad. Just tap, tap, tap. And then come over here and even pressure. Wait for about three seconds so that the ink can soak into the paper and then check it out. That turned out pretty good. Sometimes a big solid stamp doesn't always come out great, so be prepared to maybe flip your paper over and do it again if it doesn't. But that turned out pretty good, so I'm happy with it. I'm gonna close my, well, no, I better leave it open. Just don't get my arm in it, because I'm gonna do the inside of my card. Then the other punch I used tonight is called the Mod Modern Oval Punch. It's a newer punch, not brand new, but fairly new. And every time we get it back in stock, it goes really fast and sells out. And then it's unavailable for a month or two sometimes. I don't know. Anyway, right now I believe it is in stock. But as I said, it goes out of stock pretty often. So if you like this punch, which I do, um, don't hesitate to get it if you don't already have it. So then it's nice because this is such a great big word. I think it just fits really good in this punch. If you have dies or other punches, of course, those would work as well. But there's that. And then, as I said, I did pop this up. Why don't I go ahead and stamp before I get my arm in that ink, the inside. So I was really debating between, as I said, putting on here, insert clever message here, and then happy birthday. I'm going to do it on this one because I really like that. Now, this Insert Clever Message is a brand new stamp, so the first time I use it, I'm not going to stamp it right in my card. I'm going to kind of condition it by doing it and getting it kind of used to accepting the ink. Now it should be good to go. I stamped it. It looks good. I'm using um, my stamp and Pierce mat underneath my card because this is a photopolymer stamp, a clear stamp. Oops, see how I got ink on there? Get that off. 
And so you get a better impression if you have a mat, a cushion underneath it. Insert clever message here. And then I'll do happy birthday. There we go. That's the inside. Now I can close that ink and not get my hands in it. And set my thing over here on my pad. Now we'll go back to the front of the card. I'm almost done. I mean, you can tell that. Um, you need, pardon my arm going underneath there. You need dimensionals or whatever foam you use to pop things up. And I can move this mat out of the way. And I like to do one, two, and then I like to, I'm kind of weird this way, I like to cut up the middle of these when I don't want a huge one and use half. I've shown people on my team this little trick. I mean, dimensionals aren't expensive, so it's not like you can't afford more, but sometimes I just like how that works, the coverage it gives, okay? Now, before I put that down permanently, I'm going to look about where I want that. Yep. So let me put this. I might even, you know what, trim off the top of this so it's a little bit shorter. I'm going to come over to the side a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to put my hay. The other color I considered using, which would really be pretty, is this um, Berry Burst. And I kept pulling it back out. I'm going to get it out real quick and show you. And I thought, boy, that sure would be pretty with blueberry bushel instead of the green. But I don't know. Maybe the next card I'll use the blueberry bushel on because that's, or I mean the berry burst on because that's pretty. So very simple card, as I said. Um, you could put some gemstones. Um, you could have put some twine around there. Different ways to fess, fessy it up, you know. But anyway, simple. Don't forget to stamp your name on the, oh yeah, and I said I was going to use this on the inside, didn't I? I didn't on this one, but I'm going on here. I'm going to put this. When I cut the, the paper is six inch, and when I cut it down to this size, I end up with this extra strip. Do I want it to be that wide, though? I might cut that just a little bit smaller in width, because it's kind of wide. So let's go to, let's make it a half inch instead of three quarters. off camera sorry but I think you guys all know how to add your glue okay and you could butt this up clear to the bottom but I like leaving a little bit of white under it it kind of sets it off so there's that easy peasy cards like I said non-gender specific so now if I had to send a card to that guy who turned 100 I would love to send him this but I did find a different one so these will go in my stash. It, oh, yeah, like I said, if you like and share this, I'll draw names. And since I didn't tell many people that I was doing this video tonight, you stand a very good chance of winning, I'm sure. So hit like, hit share, share this with somebody, and uh, I'll draw names and send it to somebody who, the name that I draw. Um, okay, then I said I would show you my scrapbook layout real quick. So let me make sure, am I still, um, looks like I'm still showing, okay. I'll move these out of the way, move the punches out of the way. Remember, it was the modern oval and the hexagon that I used tonight. Um, put my host code back up there. I'll move the cards out of the way real quick and bring in my layouts. Now, the pictures that I scrapbooked in this two-page layout are from March of 2020. Or was it 2020 or 2019? 
when COVID started because we went down to see Allison, our daughter, in March, um, I believe it was on spring break, in Nashville, and stuff was just starting to come out about it. Um, it was it in February and March, really stuff started coming out about it. And by the time we came back from Nashville, um, you know, it was in full force. But while we were down in Nashville, people weren't wearing masks, they weren't, um, you know, staying far back from any, it was, it was crazy. So when we got home, we we're like, oh my. And then we went into lockdown, I think. And we never went back to school after that spring break because they locked us down for that year. I mean, for that school year, we didn't. So anyway, um, so these pictures are from that. Although I don't tell that story in here. This is just a few pictures that I wanted to do. What I wanted to show you about these is at our retreat, we use the new in color designer series paper it's six by six and i wanted to show you that i was inspired by our ceo sarah douglas she did a layout using the six by six paper and i thought yeah six by six can be tricky so i kind of was inspired by her to use this um, paper on the layout and also because if you look at Allie's couch she has a throw on it that I, I can't remember who got it for, if it was us or somebody else. Anyway, it happened to have colors from our in color <laughs> this year. It looked like Summer Splash and a little bit like Petunia Pop, but definitely Peach Pie. I mean, I was like, those colors are what our new in colors are, and I have this paper, so how perfect is that? So I And I wanted to also show in this, I'm using two of our die sets for my lettering. Um, this one is called... Here it is, mini alphabet dies. It's an interesting die. It's actually one die. Well, there's a couple other in there, but mostly it's one big die with all the letters on them. And some of the letters that you use often are repeated, like there's two A's and there's two O's and things that are useful like that. So you run it through one time and you most likely will get all the letters you need. So, and then I just kept my extra letters in little packs and I keep them with this die. So you'll see on the other page, I use it too. So, and then this die set that I use for those letters is called the Alphabet Alamode dies. And I love these, they're tall, they're skinny. And I liked the idea of mixing two different fonts that were so different yet I thought went good together. So here's Allie's apartment I wanted to show. Here we went to the Country Music Hall of Fame. Um, so that's us there. And then on this, this is, like I said, a two page. So here's the other, they'll go together in the book. Hard to get on the screen, both pages. But here's the other one. We went to some shows. Um, as I said, the, everybody was still doing shows then and nobody was too worried, but um, it, it all changed when we came back. So we went to the shows at the listening room and at, um, this was, um, What's that guy's name? I don't know. He, Everybody there, every famous country music person has a bar there named after him. And so, George Jones. Was, this was at the George Jones bar. Um, they had a thing called Jammin' in Your Jammies, and it was cute. The artists were wearing jammies, of course. It was just funny. And it was a writer's round. All these are writers, and they were performing their songs. And Song Suffragettes is a show that are all females because women get such little airplay, um, especially in the country music uh, genre. And so this was a bunch of women that they had, different songwriters and singers. And down here was Jeannie. Is her name Jeannie C. Riley? I don't know. She's a famous older woman star. I think that was her name. Allie will correct me. Um, she was there that night. So anyway, that's the page. This is our in color paper. And then what I wanted to show you another thing about that is they're right here. We have a new um, product in our catalog that came out recently and they're called ephemera packs. And so I've used some of our new ephemera packs here. I used the labels and layers ephemera to get this label, um, this was a label that popped out, this one, those were from this ephemera pack. The other one I used 
came from the fully flowering ephemera pack. I got these flowers from that and then something for everything. I'm not sure if I used anything from that, but I put them all in one of these cases and I'll show them to you real quickly. What they are are die cuts. They're not stickers, but they're die cuts and they're great for scrapbooking and or card making. So here's the flowering set and you get two sheets of each um, design. So these are the flowers and I used some of them out of here. And then these were the labels, as I said, and you can see I've used some out of here. Again, you get two sheets of every design. So you could use them in scrapbooking and in card making. Um, oops, there's a couple more. And then this was the something for everything. So it's got just a real big variety. It's got animals and fish and cactus and cupcakes and scenery and I don't know, all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to keep them in a stamp case. We sell these stamp cases blank, empty ones that you can use to store things in, so I'm going to store them in there. There's one more ephemera pack that's been um, unavailable, and then it came back in, and then before I got it ordered, it became unavailable again. Um, but I think right now it's available, so I'm going to get that order in soon. Um, so that's four ephemera packs we have that are good, like I said, for card making or scrapbooking. And so there's that. That's what I wanted to show you. I just added a little bit of baker's twine, used that in color paper, and I like how those turned out. I'm a pretty simple scrapbooker. Um, so, you know, I guess this is my style, but everyone's a little different. Um, um, what else did I want to say? Hmm. Any questions, anybody? Let me look there. Oh, Jamie. Jamie joined us. Hi, Jamie. If you're still here, hello. I'm just now looking at names to see who's there. Um... Thanks for tuning in, you guys. If you don't have these dies and if you are a scrapbooker, well, they work good on cards, too. If you look up any of the sets that we have that whenever I show something, if you look um, on Pinterest and put in Stampin' Up! and then the name of the item, there's always lots of great ideas that you can um, borrow from, you can case. So you'll see lots of times where this alphabet Alamo dies, and I'll show you those real quick. Or the, um, what one was this called? Mini. I, I put these in front of it. Now I can't see. Oh, yeah, mini alphabet dies. Um, you can find lots of good uses for them. Cards, scrapbooks, home decor even. I'm going to do a sampler soon, and I'll probably use some dies for that. But I wanted to show you these alphabet alamode. The neat thing about this die set, too, is you also get duplicates. You get two A's, two N's, those commonly used, two S's, two T's. So when you're die cutting them out, um, it saves you a little bit of time sometimes um, to have doubles of high-use letters. So those were the two die sets I used tonight. Um, did I, I didn't use any dies on the cards. I used the punches I showed you, the hexagon and the modern oval. The stamp set I used is a very affordable one called, what was it called again? Saying Hey. Um, I used the paper pack called Bright and Beautiful or Bold and Beautiful, was it? I don't know. Love it. It's got good patterns for kids, scrapbooking, card making. Bright and Beautiful is the paper pack. It's a six by six pack. And then I used our new in color six by six DSP pack. And those are the 2024-2026 in colors. So yeah, there you go. That's what I got to share tonight. We are gonna be heading to Nashville again in a few days to see Allie again. Um, but this, I'm always way behind in my scrapbooking, so. <laughs> In fact, that's really not even all that far behind for me right there. Um, a lot of times I'm decades behind. So I feel like that's a big plus that I finally got those scrapbooked. Do you guys all scrapbook too? Um, I think I, I know Chris does. I, am, I know Brenda does. Brenda does, what's that journal that you do? Um, oh gosh, I can't remember what you call that journal that you do. But anyway, and I think Jamie does. So, And hopefully some of you guys will catch this on the 
um, replay since I didn't give any <laughs> advance warning of this. So I will try to more often do... Oh, I know. I was going to let you know. Uh, first of all, there's my host code again. Don't forget, every $50 gives you a $5 coupon to spend in August. But I wanted to tell you my next crafty day is August 17th. And it will be at the church on South Street, the Southview um, Christian Church, I believe it's called again. It's a great setting there. We have so much um, space. It's very comfortable, a nice full kitchen. The lighting is wonderful. Everything about it's great. Um, for me, I don't have to move a lot of heavy tables and things around, so it's it's been a good location. And I think the night before that, that's going to be a Saturday. And I think on the night before that, on Friday, I'm looking at possibly offering um, a Christmas card class. So especially if you're already going to come Saturday, you can just come to the Friday and bring your stuff and do Christmas cards. It's an add-on class. And uh, then come back Saturday for our retreat there. I'm going to have home decor project in with this next retreat besides just cards so I'm kind of excited about that um, I haven't put the registration up for that yet but I hope to get that done here in the next day or two I did put a announcement up to save the date so people would know and oh the other thing I've been working on getting ready is a BOGO sale I've been pulling out retired stamp sets and punches and dies and DSP, designer series paper, things that I'm going to be selling at a BOGO sale. A BOGO sale means that you get my gently used, sometimes they're brand new, but gently used um, items that are retired, you get them for free by spending what those items initially cost um, out of the, our current catalog. When you say you pick out something that's retired that costs $50, if you buy $50 of product from the new catalogs, the, the current stuff that is available, I give you the same value in my BOGO items for free you pick out. So it's a pretty good deal. The only thing you have to pay is if you don't live here, you need to pay shipping for the free items that you get, what it would cost me to ship to you. but. It's a it's a heck of a good deal because you get my stuff for free by ordering same value of new stuff. So you get that stuff too. So it's a win-win. Anyway, it helps me clean out my craft room, which is getting way too full. So any I won't keep you any longer. We just got back from the dog park right before I went on live. And so I need to go and get a, settled down after that and put some more stuff away. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Um, thank you for liking and sharing. And if you haven't liked and shared, I said that I would draw a name. And since there aren't very many people that knew I was coming on tonight, there aren't very many entries probably going to happen. I'll wait for a week and then I'll draw because we're going to be gone to see Allie. But whoever's name I pull who liked and shared my video will have their pick of one of these two cards. I'll give it to you for free. Oops, I'm sorry, it's, is it in the screen? Yeah, give it to you for free. Send it to you and you can use it as an example or you can send it out yourself or whatever. So thank you guys, thank you so much. It's good to see you tonight. Oh, Jessica's just getting on. Hi, Jessica. Oh, and Debbie's on too. I didn't know that. Hello, Debbie. Thank you guys if you were on. I appreciate you and I'll uh, try to do this more often, more than once, <laughs> every six months or so. Uh, anyway, take care. Bye-bye.